Okay, the next insect on the list is the eastern tent caterpillar. Um, and it has this name because it builds these tents um, in the crotches of trees. And it's one thing you need to remember, it's always in the crotch of branches um, that you will find these tents, never out on the end of the limbs, um, but in the branch crotches um, is where the tents are. And they live inside these tents. Um, they come out in the uh, nighttime and they feed when they're safe from predators and then they return to the tent. The larvae is a rather large caterpillar and it has a white stripe down the middle um, that's very characteristic um, of this caterpillar. The adults are a tan colored moth and they have buff colored lines. So it's very easy to identify um, that you can see the tan color and has just these little buff lines, two buff lines um, down the wings and it really has a very hairy um, body. This is the only um, tan colored moth with these buff lines in it so it's very easy to distinguish. You may also see egg masses um, which just looks like black encrusting um, around a twig. So the egg mass is a black encrusting around the twig. So you could be given the adult caterpillar that has the white line down the back, the egg mass that's the black encrusting around the twig, or the adult insect, which is a tan color moth with buff stripes. Um, or again, the damage, the tent that they build in the crotches of the tree. And this is the eastern tent caterpillar. The next insect we're going to talk about is the fall webworm. And this webworm also creates a tent, but it does it out on the end of the branches. So in contrast to the eastern tent caterpillar that we just looked at, the tent will be out on the end of the branches encompassing the leaves instead of in the crotches. Um, and in these tents, you can find caterpillars um, and you can find frass um, within these tents. The larvae or the caterpillar is a very small, fuzzy, white caterpillar. So it's very, very fuzzy. It's easy to distinguish. And the moth is a white moth. So it's about the same size as the eastern tent caterpillar, but it's a white, solid white, fuzzy moth. Um, and still pretty small. So for the fall webworm, you could see the damage, which is the tent, out at the end of the branches encompassing the leaves. You can have a small fuzzy white caterpillar or a small solid white moth. And that's the fall webworm. The next insect we're going to talk about is the gypsy moth. And the gypsy moth, again, attacks hardwoods. Um, they leave their egg masses on the outside of the bark, and they're small, tan, fuzzy um, blotches of eggs. Uh, the female puts her fur into the eggs to help hold them together so that the egg mass stays on the bark of the tree. When the, they emerge and they become larvae, these larvae are hairy, but it may be hard to see here, but they have blue dots followed by red dots on their body, and that's a very distinguishable character for gypsy moths. So you wanna look for red dots and blue dots. So if you got a eastern tent caterpillar, you would have a white stripe down the center, and if you have gypsy moth caterpillar, you would have blue dots and red dots on its back. The egg mat or the pupae um, is just a cocoon. It's going to be 
uh, fusiform shaped and it's black if you get one of those. And then the, there's a difference between the male moth and the white and the female moth. The male moth is dark colored, brown, and the female moth is white with dark brown striping on the wings. She also has a very, very large body um, and she cannot fly. So when she emerges from larvae to adult, she just crawls um, up the tree, um, signals for a male to come find her, then she lays her eggs and she does not fly. So she's a white moth, just like the fall webworm. She's about three times the size and she has these brown stripes on her wings. And she has that large, large body, as you can see, um, and she cannot fly. And that's the gypsy moth. The next insect we're going to talk about is the Paley's weevil. Um, this beetle is very distinguishable from uh, the other insects that you will see. It has a very long snout, um, more like an elephant trunk um, coming off the bottom of its face. Um, so it's very distinguishable characteristic um, in this beetle. Um, so you want to make sure again that you have your magnifying glass um, so you can see this characteristic. It's one that you'll want to look for so that you know that you have a weevil. Um, they cause damage. They feed on seedlings. Um, and you can see feeding damage up and down the stem where they remove the bark as they're feeding. I mean, it's very distinguishable. Um, so you could get the damage, um, which is this feeding, up and down the stems of these young pines or say the insect and you want to look for that snout. Um, there can sometimes be a spattering of little tiny dots um, caused by the hairs on the back of the beetle um, and sometimes um, there will be no spots and that is the Paley's weevil. The next insect is black turpentine beetle, and the black turpentine beetle is a very large um, beetle within the bark beetle family. So you will have Ips beetle, southern pine beetle, and black turpentine beetle. Black turpentine beetle will be the largest black beetle on your test. Um, they produce these large pitch tubes when they bore into trees, um, so you could see pitch tubes. Um, but very, very large black, be um, black beetle. And you can see a size difference if you compare it to an Ips beetle. There is a definite size difference. And the southern pine beetle is about the same size or smaller than this Ips beetle um, and is more of a reddish brown color. So the black turpentine beetle is the largest beetle and it is solid black. Um, and it forms these large, massive pitch tubes from the pitch exuding from the tree as the beetle bores in. So that is the black turpentine beetle. The next beetle is the Ipsen graver beetle. Um, and it's a medium-sized, small, reddish-colored beetle. Um, one thing you'll want to notice with this beetle is that it looks like a scoop has been taken out of its rear end, and you can see that very easily if you're using your magnifying glass. Um, and it looks like it has teeth around the edges, um, and just like the rear end's missing, like somebody just took a big bite out of it. 
Um, you, the galleries formed by the Ips beetles are H-shaped, or they can also be Y-shaped. So when you're looking at the gallery formation and damage caused by the Ips beetle, that's one characteristic you want to look for, either these H shaped galleries or these Y shaped galleries. Um, and that's very distinguishable from southern pine beetle for these Ips beetles. So the beetle with the scoop out of its rear end and the H or the Y shaped galleries um, to distinguish the Ips beetle. The next beetle is the southern pine beetle. And the southern pine beetle, again, is a small reddish um, beetle. It's going to be very distinguishable between the Ips and the black turpentine. It'll look similar to the Ips, and if you think it's an Ips, you have to look for the rear end missing. If there's no rear end missing, then it's the southern pine beetle. Um, another thing for the southern pine beetle, when you look at the galleries, the galleries are S-shaped, so you can see all these S's in the gallery pattern. So that's what you're looking for. So S-shapes in the galleries for southern pine beetle, which is distinguishable from the H-shapes or the Y-shapes of the Ips beetle. So S-shaped galleries. They also, when they bore into the tree, they always bore in on top of the plates. So if the boring holes, the entrance holes, are on top of the plates, that's another sign that it's southern pine beetle. Ips beetles will always bore in the crevices in between the plates, and southern pine beetle always bore in on top of the plates. So if you're looking at a piece of bark, um, that's another thing that you can look at between the S-shaped galleries. If the entrance holes are on top of the plates, and you have a small red beetle, and that will let you know that you are looking at southern pine beetle, vice, ips, or black turpentine beetle. The next insect, or the last insect on our list, is the locust borer. Um, this is very distinctive of any insect we've seen so far. It's solid black with bright, bright yellow markings. It has very distinctive long antennae. The antennae are going to be almost as long or as long as the insect's body. Um, but this will be, this is the only insect on the list that has these bright colored markings, so it's very easy to distinguish. The larvae is a very indescript white caterpillar with a red, very tiny, tiny red head, um, and it has a round head, so um, it does not look like any of the other caterpillars in the group. There are no hairs on it. Um, it just looks like just skin, just white wrinkly skin. Um, and you can see the damage that the larvae cause in the, the tree, in the locust. It bores these long tunnels um, and feeds around those tunnels and just leaves big holes and concave. If you don't have the inside, you can see on the mature tree, it makes these large, large holes um, where the insects are boring in and out of the tree. Um, so very distinguishable damage. Um, no other insect that we looked at will cause these large, large holes in the tree or as wide and deep of cavities where they burrow, um, unlike the southern pine beetle and the bark beetles that have very shallow galleries. The locust borer has very deep, thick galleries. And again, it, the adult is just that black, black, shiny color with bright, bright yellow 
markings with long skinny legs and long antennae. It will be very, very distinctive from anything else that you see. And that's the locust borer.